at the moment, there is really no methods that allow the, the sequencing of proteins, um, of full-length protein at the single molecule level. And, and so there is a huge interest in developing new techniques that allow to sequence those proteins, especially if they are full length at the single molecule level. The, the importance of that is because the human proteome, which is very important to understand our health, the way we age and all the kind of the condition that we have, um, is made by a, a really vast amount of proteins that are very heterogeneous and, and science things that um, is very important to actually address the heterogeneity with single molecule protein sequencing techniques. So right now you can sequence um, DNA with nanopores and you do that by using an enzyme to control the transport of the, the speed of transport across the nanopore and use an electric field that you apply across this nanopore to drive the transport itself across the pore. Um, if you want to do the same things with, the, with proteins, um, you need to kind of find a, a force that allow the same transport of the polymer across the pore. And because the proteins are not charged, you cannot really use the same physical mechanism that you use with DNA. You need to kind of find a new mechanism to allow the transport of protein across the nanopore. And that's why we, um, we look into engineering a, a, a force which is done by the water molecules and ion molecules that directionally moves from um, you know, one side to the other of the nanopore. And we use this kind of force, which is called an electrosmotic force. Um, and uh, the challenge was to, to engineer this force that is strong enough to transport this uh, polypeptide across an ampore, which up until now, it was not really known if you can do this. So in our study, we used the side nanopore because uh, it has um, a neutral barrel, meaning that it has no net charge. And this pore really enabled us to sample what we can do with the electrophoretic force. And what are the limits uh, of the electrophoretic force in polypeptide translocation? And to test this, we made uh, model substrates. And because we could design them, we could make sure that they have no structure. So at least we avoid this problem for a bit. And the first one is a very heavy, heavily positively charged protein, S1. And the other one is tzatziki, which is of opposite charge, but less densely charged. And we could see that above a certain threshold, we could translocate S1. However, for tzatziki, we couldn't even uh, see capture. So that's how much you can do with the electrophoretic force. And this shows that we really need electrosmotic flow. And to induce an electrosmotic flow, we have to introduce negative charges uh, inside the side K nanopore. And we wanted to see how, how many charges we can introduce when we reach the limit of how much uh, electrosmotic flow we could engineer. So we identified the best pore by doing this ion selectivity measurements. And the higher the selectivity, the higher the electrosmotic flow. At least it's an uh, indirect measure. And we noticed that if the charges are too close to each other, as already shown by the three aspartates mutants and also by the four aspartate mutants, then we have less selectivity. And therefore, we need at least one nanometer um, between the charges. So placing these uh, four charges one nanometer away result in the highest selectivity for um, this nanopore. And this is the nanopore we uh, used for further experiments. So now having established the best nanopore, we moved back uh, model substrates to see if we get any improvement. And for S1, we observed acceleration, which is what we expect because now we have two forces acting together. And for Tzatziki, we actually could capture and translocate. And this was a great milestone because we could uh, translocate against electrophoretic force. So this really suggests that you only need electrosmotic flow and electrophoretic components is less uh, relevant in the setup. But then we had an extra question whether we could translocate a substrate with consecutive negative charges because this is something that can occur in nature. So we designed another substrate named Mujde that has these charges. And nicely enough, we could translocate this one. So we really answered these questions. So now that we could translocate against the electrophoretic force, we could test more proteins and we move towards more real proteins. However, the extra challenge with real proteins is their folding. And to disrupt the folding, we can use the naturing agents such as urea, which is compatible with our system. And using urea enables us to break the structure. 
And to test whether this is possible, we tried three proteins, namely maltose binding protein, glucose binding protein, and DHFR. And we were very thrilled to see that all three uh, could be translocated. And furthermore, they all produced unique current signatures, suggesting that it might be even possible to fingerprint proteins with our approach. Yes, yeah, so the, these results are, are, are really important because that's really the first time that we can prove that you can transport polypeptides of any kind, um, not only polypeptides that are electrophoretically charged, across nanopore. And that's really is, the, you know, what I consider perhaps the, the last milestone that we need to achieve to, in principle at least, um, show that we can sequence protein with nanopores. And the reason for that is because now that we can thread as a single file an entire protein without tagging, that means that you can think about all the possible ways to control the transport, for example, using enzymes, um, or even just use no uh, enzymes at all and just use these kind of fingerprints that Adina showed um, to identify proteins. At the moment, right now, we, the, the translocation is too fast to sequence. Um, so that's you, we will have to reduce the translocation speed. You can do that by using enzymes that can control this transport, and we're working towards that goal. Um, or you can engineer the pore to uh, slow down the transport and um, try to address um, individual amino acids as they pass through the pore, and we also work towards that goal. So the future would tell if you can only fingerprint uh, proteins like we can do now, and that's already many applications could come from this, or we can actually go you know, sequencing towards the sequencing of proteins, uh, which is something that, of course, is the ultimate goal of our technology. Thank you.